I'm a All right. Well, uh, my name is Terry Kalesa. I'm the CEO of Red Rock Biofuels, and uh, we are uh, a long time coming here. Let's put it that way. It's been seven years since we started developing this project, and uh, it takes a lot of people to do this thing. So. Uh, for us, it's kind of a thank you to everybody who's helped us in the last seven years get this off the ground, from the financing folks to the, uh, the vendors who are supplying the technology, to all the uh, government folks who have worked together to make this possible. So it's been a long time uh, coming. So I must be brief because I got a lot better speakers than me today. So. Uh, Red Rock, basically, we take for forest waste, basically. We take the branches, the limbs. Uh, the needles, the stuff that the, the sawmill guys aren't using. The sawdust, we'll take all that, and basically we heat it up to 1800 degrees without the presence of oxygen, and that creates a, it gasifies off, so it doesn't burn, it creates this synthetic gas, and it's like natural gas almost, and then we clean that up, we run it through this uh, called the Fischer trope process, it's what the Germans used in World War II to run the war machine, it was developed over in Germany 80 years ago, and what it does is takes that syn gas, puts it into long hydrocarbon chains, uh, that we run into a hydrocracker, which every refiner in the country Country has, and we just cut those hydrocarbon chains into, into fuel, jet fuel, diesel fuel, and naphtha are our three products. So the technology itself is not new. They're doing it on coal in South Africa right now. Uh, they do on natural gas in Qatar, and so they're doing it all over the world. So our fuels on a new fuel, the biomass feedstock part of it's the new part, really. And we had a great uh, tri agency initiative with the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Department of Energy, and the Navy in putting together this alternative fuels initiative and helping to get the industry going and especially here in Oregon as well. If you want to see Lakeview grow you got to bring in an industry. Industry will create jobs but those jobs these people will come in they'll buy houses they'll rent houses they'll pay taxes then you're going to see businesses and another grocery store. <laughs> what we need. Thank you. Uh, Lakeview had the uh, they had a project. Iberdrola was doing a uh, biomass power project here. Uh, they were going to put their power into California at the time, and they had done a lot of the legwork on working with rounding up supply of feedstock and stuff. So once they had backed out of their deal, that couldn't get the PPA with California, we kind of stepped into that role. And then we worked with Tad Mason, one of our consultants uh, from TSS, to get, make sure we had enough wood supply in the area, and we clearly had three times what we would need. And there was a plenty of waste uh, uh, material that was around in the forest we worked with the uh, guys that said would you bring it to us if we put it in three inch chips can you and said yeah we'd, we'd love to do that otherwise they're scattering on the floor or they're lighting them on fire these slash piles so for them it was a good solution so that's kind of how we came into Lakeview it was kind of the, the, the pre the legwork had kind of been done by another company uh, as we jumped in this is a dream come true while we've had many cornerstone industries that have weathered the tough times and, and made our county survive and our community down here in Lakeview survive. This is what I believe, as we've talked about uh, over the last several months, it's gonna be the domino that actually creates new growth, stabilizes existing and creates that new growth, makes us all a better place because we do need this economic shot in the arm. Working in the sawmill myself, five sawmills operating, we're down to one. You're going to have that lull. You're going to have things that happen, and, and that affects your community. As we change and everything, uh, we're starting to see some more positive things come out of it. But when we're 78 percent publicly owned, uh, we need to use that resource out there. This project here will use that resource, and so we're able to get those materials off of public and private lands out there, and uh, that that just creates a lot more optimism, a lot more positive out there. The biorefinery that will grow here behind you marks a turning point. As Commissioner Shown mentioned, it will help keep our forests healthy by using waste biomass before it burns up. It will help this mill town continue to be a place where things are made. And critically, it will provide renewable low carbon transport fuels to combat global climate change. All right. All right. Here we are, we pull it up. One, three, one, two, three. Got it. <laughs>